The war in Ukraine is being viewed with particular fear in the tiny Baltic states. Like Ukraine, they were once part of the Soviet Union and fear Russia might try to annex their territory too. Latvia, for example, shares a sizable border with Russia. Many here now feel constantly under threat. DW's Yuri Reschetto visited a village in western Latvia to find out how Russia's war is affecting daily life. He found security concerns are not the only problem facing local residents. Every day, Janus Rosenthal's uses around eight meters of linen to produce six scarves, which he sells with his wife, Lila. Janus has been running the business for 20 years, but doesn't know how much longer he can continue. The war in Ukraine has changed everything. I'm very worried about everything to do with the war. You don't know how much fuel is going to cost at the filling station. And even just turning the lights on eats up money. Janus has friends who are helping him to build his house. But the price of building materials in Latvia has gone up by half, and he doesn't know when it will be finished. The Rosenthals live in a small village in western Latvia, set in beautiful countryside. Janus takes the children to school each morning and brings them home again later. But all is not as idyllic as it seems. With a population of just two million, Latvia is one of the poorest countries in the European Union, its economy traditionally closely linked to Russia's. The war has had a disastrous impact on business owners like Janus. We've always worked closely with business partners in Russia, and people there always wanted our products. Now that's all gone. It's such a sad waste. Unease about Latvia's big neighbor to the east has risen sharply since the start of the war. Latvia declared independence from the Soviet Union more than 30 years ago. But the invasion of Ukraine has brought back traumatic memories. It feels like the apocalypse. You wake up completely confused. You read the news and wonder what the hell is going on in the world. But I'm hoping things will get better. It's human nature to make the best of things. It's only a few hours' drive from the Rosenthal's house in western Latvia to the border with Russia in the east. The two countries have a long shared history. But today, Latvians feel threatened by Russia. And DW's Yuri Reschetto joins us now from Riga for more. Yuri, how are people in Latvia really doing nowadays after almost a year uh, since the war began? What's the mood? Well, on the one hand, the people of Latvia are quite worried about their future, uh, but there is no atmosphere of total um, fear or so, or despair, nor are people freezing in their homes because they can no longer pay their gas bills. Here in Riga, people enjoy Christmas markets and drink mild wine under the Christmas trees. That is on the outside. Life hasn't changed that much. Where people feel the war is, of course, primarily in their wallets. Everything has become more expensive, especially heating costs. Uh, yes, nobody freezes because because of the high bill, but most have no to save a lot elsewhere to pay that bill. And uh, the topic of war also dominates the everyday life. Um, solidarity with Ukraine remains strong and just as strong as condemnation of Russia's war of aggression against Ukraine. And you're in your report, uh, the Latvians said they're afraid of an attack by Russians on their country as well. Is, is that fear justified, do you think? Well, look, the Latvians are used to the threat or, let's say, um, the influence of the Russians. Uh, by the way, not only the Russians. The history of this country is more than dramatic because Latvia was constantly at the mercy of the others, the Germans, the Russians, the Poles and Lithuanians, the Swedes, then against, again, uh, the Germans and the Russians. So historically, people here and in other Baltic countries have suffered many, many times and a lot. The fact that the Russians have now attacked the Ukrainians is, by, is hardly surprising 
surprising for the Latvians, especially of the uh, uh, older generation. Yanis, uh, the protagonist of my report, told me about his grandmother, who was on the one hand happy about his business with the Russians, but nevertheless warned him about the Russians. And now it turns out that she was probably right. Um, one must therefore consider the historical dimension when speaking of the relationship between the Baltic peoples and Russia. Always be careful, always be aware, they always said. In talking of history, Yuri, before the war, there was a, a lot of support for Vladimir Putin, especially among the Russian-speaking minority in Latvia. Is, is the country divided today? Well, of course, Latvians have many contacts with Russia. Uh, the country has a border with Russia. Um, a great many people here in Latvia use Russian as their everyday language. Uh, in Riga, where I'm right now, capital of Latvia, a quarter of the population speaks Russian, and in the second largest city, Daugavpils, there are 80% Russian-speaking citizens. Uh, in addition, especially in the border regions, many people have watched uh, or have been watching Russian television will or its propaganda power over the past 20 years. Um, until a few years ago, Riga had a mayor of Russian origin. The former interior minister here of Latvia also has Russian roots. And of, if you go to Yurmala, 20 minutes by car from here on the coast of the Baltic Sea, you will see a lot of houses that the Russians have bought. Um, that is, this country all along was very closely <clears throat> related to Russia. You can change that politically overnight but not in the people's minds. Nevertheless, of course, the Russian-friendly people, or the Russia-friendly people here, also see what Russia is doing with Ukraine, and that is why their relationship with Russia is changing in favor of strong solidarity with Ukraine. And the authorities are doing everything they can to reduce Russia's influence, from banning Russian media to largely closing the border to most Russian citizens, especially Russian tourists. Okay, lots of changes taking place. Yuri Reschetto in Riga, thanks so much for that.